no 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 this is no good hang on let me just try something weather get better huh that's better i did not know i could do that this is the first run of the day and the wind is 12 to 18 miles per hour but not turbulent and coming from a direction not so affected by trees in the constant smooth wind hovering was very stable and i was amazed how stable it was only one foot off the ground and controlling it is comparatively easy i was told in comments this could be the case and it seems as though it is In the next run I attempted to go higher and there's something that seems to happen when I do quite often. When I raise to the elevation I require, the rear of the helicopter tilts downward and I end up losing height. This could be me or it could be the tail fins reacting to the downwash more aggressively further out of ground effect. Not sure but it seems to happen on a regular basis. It's probably just me, so I'm not going to spend too much time thinking about it for the time being. I have taken some advice from comments and added plastic balls to the skids. They are mooring buoys, or buoys if you live in America, and only weigh 110 grams each. The end of the skids are still bent up, but the balls increase the maximum roll angle before digging in becomes a risk. They also reduce the sliding drag in longer grass. I have also decreased the length of the cyclic stick and increased the sensitivity of the yaw veins. I have also added a coolant flow restrictor. The purpose of this was to establish whether the coolant flow needs to be increased or decreased. I have read information online that says to increase it as it will make the coolant temperature more uniform and prevent the cooling coming out the engine from being too hot. I also read that too slow a coolant velocity causes laminar flow and it has the effect of insulating the core flow from absorbing heat. Contradictory to this, I had some comments saying too fast a coolant flow will prevent the coolant being able to absorb the heat from the engine. Which is right, I don't know, but I'm hoping to find out. Well the flight time on this run went up by 10 seconds, however, there's a but, and it's a big one. Something I also changed was the expansion tank cap. This was because the old one fell apart. When I stopped, I saw coolant coming out the left exhaust and on various other hose connectors that hadn't leaked before. I have now realised that the previous cap had never allowed the system to pressurise. And that was the reason for the extra 10 seconds in flight duration, not the flow restrictor. After fixing the various leaks, I tried again without the flow restrictor, but one of the drive belts started ratcheting. You can hear it click and it is always the bottom wider belt. I need to start measuring belt tension for acceptable levels to prevent this from occurring again. With the belt tight, I now want to know about the coolant flow rate, but the battery is dead. The battery used to do 10 to 15 runs before a charge was needed, but today it's more like 5 and I haven't been running the fan between tests. Either something is draining the battery more than usual, or I've damaged it by letting it go too low on the voltage before recharging. So, I gave the battery a quick charge and the wind has increased now. I'm trying to hover and there is some massive increases in altitude I did not ask for. With fixed pitch, this machine cannot react to violent changes in altitude like a collective pitch machine. And so I think this is now too windy to continue. You know those days where nothing goes your way? I almost got to find out if the coolant restrictor had made a difference, but it was inconclusive. At that point, I decided I had had enough and decided to go in. Have you ever wondered why jerry cans have got three handles? So I like my very bright balls. I'm happy with the increased sensitivity of yaw and I'm happy with the reduced cyclic stick height. One thing I did notice in the gusty wind was when you spool down perhaps to 100 RPM or less, you need to hold on tightly to the cyclic or it will start to oscillate with increasing magnitude. A rotor brake would be a thing of importance in this situation, which I know are installed on Robinsons, probably for different reasons though. 
I've had quite a lot of comments suggesting to go higher to help with control and I do agree. I think that would be a good way to get to work. Let me know what you think.